me just get situated here. Welcome back to another video. If you're new here, I'm Laura. This is the Last Minute Laura channel. I usually am doing crochet videos or natural dye, usually something to do with yarn and crafting. But today I am going to be doing something a little bit different. I want to go over some of my favorite projects from the past year. I want to show you some of the stuff I'm working on now, and I want to tell you about what my plans are for this year, both personal and yarn related. So I have my notebooks, uh, which have all of the information that I wanted to touch on in this video. It's going to be a little bit of a longer video, just kind of a chat through. So make a tea. I know I've got mine here uh, or a snack or get your project out and you can just sort of listen along. Okay, so I want to talk about the things that I'm proud of for the year of 2019 and I made a list. They're in no particular order, um, but I'm just going to go through them all. One of the things that I'm really proud of this year is that I got really into natural dyes. So I made like 34 natural dye videos in the last year in 2019 varying from black eyed Susans to onion skins. I did Concord grapes. I did tons. I just did everything that I could find. I made it into a natural dye. I have a couple of my favorite skeins here, um, which I haven't used yet because I don't know what to make with them. So my black eyed Susans made this beautiful army green. I'm really pumped about it. I don't know what I want to make with it yet, but I think I'm going to pair it with this one, which was made from onion skins. It's got an army green as well, which I like the idea of pairing those together. And it's also got that beautiful golden yellow. I got a lot stronger with using mordants like alum, um, iron, which I made myself iron water solution, and also lye water, which is uh, from wood ash. So I got a lot more confident using those types of things. I kind of came into my own with my dyes. I, I don't have a full recipe for any of them. It's more like I just sort of figured out what I wanted to do as I went along. And that's totally like my personality to be able to just sort of edit things as I go because I'm kind of all over the place. Um, I also did a lot with black walnuts, which I really enjoyed this year. Black walnuts have such a beautiful range of color. And if you ever have the chance to make dye on wool with uh, black walnuts, I really recommend it. It's so beautiful. And also, it makes the wool smell really nice, but that's probably my most exciting colors came from black walnuts. And then I have one more that was really fun. Um, and this one also came from, what did this come from? It came from something, something that isn't yellow. Why can't I remember? Maybe it was onion skins. Either way, um, I have this beautiful golden yellow that I'm really excited. Goldenrod, that's what it's from. Goldenrod. I only made the one skein from Goldenrod and it's this beautiful color that I'm really like smitten with, I must say. So I think I'm gonna be making some projects with these guys this year. So if you like any of these, stay tuned. I'm gonna be making a lot of stuff this year. I've got a big list. So natural dyes is one of the things I was really proud to learn this year and to not master, but master in my own way. Also, I'm proud that I built a live stream community. I mean, you guys built the live stream community, but I showed up like every day. There are 220 streams now on the channel over that now, 220 something, but all of those are on the channel and I showed up. I had rough days. I cried on the streams. I've showed off on the streams. I've been up, I've been down, I've been all over the place, excited, angry. I've really exposed myself totally in those streams and it's been really cool. It's been really fun making friends all over the world. We've got people in the stream all the way from the Netherlands and Sweden, people all over the United States, a big group in Texas, so hi Texans. Um, and quite a few in Canada as well, some from Nova Scotia, some all the way from the other side of BC. So it's been really cool to be able to connect with people that otherwise I would never have met, I would never have been able to connect with. And I think that's really cool. I've, I've really been enjoying it. And even when I'm having a rough day, it's pretty cool to be able to just sort of share that with a whole bunch of people. It's kind of therapeutic to just sort of vent out the truth to 
everybody. Um, and I've really been enjoying that. And the community that's been built is, it's kind of crazy. Like I've made friends that have sent me things from all over the world. So I have like yarn from England that was hand spun by a friend who made it with her sheep. It's like magical. Hi Sadie, by the way. <laughs> um, so the live stream is something I'm really proud of this year, uh, that I showed up despite hard times and despite um, awkwardness and despite cold sores or zits or just being really tired. I, I showed up most of the days, Monday to Friday, if you aren't already in on this. Monday to Friday, I do live stream 7 a.m. Eastern time until around 8.30 a.m. Sometimes it goes till nine, sometimes I cut it early at like 8.15 but we're there every day. So if you'd like to join, join us. It's lots of fun. And if you're not subscribed, what are you doing? Subscribe, click the button on whichever side the button's on, hit the bell notification, and then you'll get notifications that I'm coming out with a video. I try to come out with an edited video about once a week. Hello, on the weekends, I've got my doggy here. Come here, buddy, come on. Ugh. You can sit right here. Ugh. Um, yeah, I live stream most days and I put out a video that's edited um, most weeks. Sometimes I fall back a little bit if I'm overwhelmed or if there's a holiday, sometimes I'll do uh, fewer videos, sometimes I'll do more. So definitely subscribe and hit the bell notification if you're not already subscribed. And if you are, um, leave me a comment. Tell me when you subscribed. How long have you been around for? How long have you been part of the last minute gang? I'm last minute Laura after all, so I guess we're all kind of the last minute gang. If you've been here for a while, let me know when you subscribed. And if you're new, tell me you're new. I'd love to get to know all of you and I really appreciate all of you who are here. So yeah, leave a comment for that. Um, okay, the other thing that I'm really proud of is the dog sweaters I've made this year. So I've done four dog sweater tutorials this year, all of which are on my channel. Uh, you can find them, I'll, I'm not gonna link them below because I have like a lot of tutorials that I'm gonna mention in this video, but um, the videos are on the channel, just search dog sweater on Last Minute Laura channel. But um, the two of my favorites are actually the, the most recent ones that I made. This little guy, this golden one, I really like how this one turned out. It's got a little button on the side and it fits my dog Thunder perfectly. It's a really easy pattern to manipulate to make it bigger or smaller for your dog. Um, and I've been really happy with it and it's been doing really well on YouTube. So I'm like, I'm very proud of this one. The other one I'm really proud of is my Christmas dog sweater. I made another one that isn't in Christmas colors um, so that he can wear it all, all year long because Thunder's a bit of a chilly dog, he's little so you know. Um, and this one also is doing really well on the channel, which I feel like dog stuff, baby stuff, and like stuff that only uses one skein, they tend to do really well, which is funny because like my favorite videos are the ones where I make like a huge sweater. But anyway, I've been doing, I've been feeling really confident about these dog sweaters. Do you want to wear one right now, buddy? Here. So I've been pretty proud of the fact that I've been able to make, come here, sweaters for the dog, um, but also that people have been sending me their photos of their completed dog sweaters. That feels really cool. So if you make any of my patterns, send me the photos of them. I love seeing your completed projects that are based off of things that I created. And uh, you can do that at lastminutelaura.ca on um, Instagram. That's the best place to uh, send me stuff because I'm on Instagram a little too often. Um, but yeah, dog sweaters. That's something I'm pretty proud about. Another thing I'm pretty proud about, um, not yarn related this time, is uh, taking care of my mental health. So 2019 has been a bit of a kick in the pants for me. It's been a hard year. I've had a lot of like emotional downs, a couple of bouts of depression, a lot of anxiety. It's just been tough. And I was struggling for a bunch of 2018 on my own, kind of denying that there was anything there. And um, 2019, I, I asked for help. I went to my doctor and I started going to therapy. So I go to therapy once a month now and it's been really helpful. Just having an adult to vent to that isn't a friend or a family member that then gives you good advice. It's not really anything you've never heard before, but um, it's just nice to hear it from someone who doesn't like know the ins and outs of your personal life, except for whatever you tell them. Um, so, 
that's been really good. That's been really therapeutic. I mean, like I know it's called therapy, but it's nice. And I think I'm gonna keep doing it throughout 2020. That's one of my like ongoing goals is to keep track of my mental health, noticing my triggers, things that um, start to set me off on a bad direction, you know, like forgetting to drink water um, or not sleeping enough or not uh, partaking in enough self-care, you know, taking baths, pushing my cuticles back, just taking care of myself. Um, so I'm going to really concentrate on that in 2020 as well, but I'm pretty proud of myself that I, again, I, I showed up. I, I did what I had to do in order to pull myself out each time. I will say the live stream community has been really, really helpful. Uh, noticing when I start to slip and saying, maybe you should call your doctor. You're kind of like negative Nelly today. So it's been awesome having them around, but also I feel like I'm getting stronger at figuring it out on my own as well. So there's that. Um, I'm also really proud of the crochet tutorials I've made. This year I made 37 crochet tutorial videos. 37! That's a lot! That's almost one a week every, like, there's 52 weeks in a year, right? So 37 is a lot of videos. And I made so many different things. I made baby stuff, I made dog stuff, I made stuff for me, stuff for my partner Alex, I made yoga socks and leg warmers and fingerless gloves. I made a whole bunch of stuff and it was it was a lot. It's, I have a lot of handmade yarn things and so does everyone in my family now. Um, so I'm pretty proud that I made that many videos where I had to film all of the different angles and I had to like cut it all together. Editing is like a, a lot and then I had to promote them. I had to post them on YouTube. I had to write descriptions and make thumbnails and put in the tags and all that stuff and it's a lot of work. I mean, like, I really like doing it, but behind the scenes, making these videos is, it's a lot of work. This one, I'm probably not even going to cut. I'm just going to jump right into it because I don't want to edit it. But um, for the edited tutorial videos, that's like a lot. You have to get filming all on the same lighting. So if it takes more than one day, I have to like make sure I do it at the same time of day and on days where it's super cloudy I don't have lighting equipment so I can't film when it's like raining and dark or when it's snowing and dark so it limits how often I can film but I've pulled through this year and made 37 different crochet tutorials and I'm pretty proud of that what next oh moving out to the country that's something else I'm really proud of this year um, in April, my partner and I were having a rough time in Toronto. We were just struggling with the city life and we were both in like a rut creatively and it just, it wasn't working. And in one weekend, I found this farm and we signed the lease and applied and put in our deposit and everything in like within a weekend. And, um, and we moved out here July 1st. It was wonderful we moved for Canada Day and we were in here and now we're living on a farm and that was one of my really big life goals like to live on a farm is on on those bucket list things for me I really something I really want and now we're living on a farm on top of a mountain like I don't know how we got here but it's the same price of rent as our one bedroom apartment in Toronto but we have a whole house and like a hundred acres of farmland and forests all around. It's a magical place and I'm I'm pretty proud that I p pulled it off and that we're still pulling it off. It blows my mind that we're still managing to like live here. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's something I'm proud of. Ooh, this one's a good one. The sweaters I made this year. I'm really proud of the sweaters I made this year. I made 12 sweaters, human sweaters, 12 of them. Can you believe that? And Three of the sweaters that I made, four of the sweaters that I made, were made entirely with yarn that I dyed myself with plants, which I think is really cool. I mean, I think it's really cool. So I'm gonna just show you uh, some of my favorite ones because I didn't wanna bring out all 12 sweaters, like that's a bit much. Um, so I'm gonna show you, I think four of my favorite sweaters I've got here. Number one, definitely for me, is this one. It's the Puffy Jumper. I love this sweater. I wear it like multiple times a week and it's made, this one is one of the ones that's all hand dyed yarn. So this is mostly onion skins and black walnuts, but this is with no mordant. So it's very soft colors. It's just whatever could grab onto the yarn without 
any mordant to help it bite on. It's got these beautiful puffy sleeves that are so cozy and warm. I love them. And so many people have been making it. This is one of those ones that people send me photos of all the time and I love it. It makes me so happy. And I love that people are accommodating their other sweaters to use this sleeve because I made several videos, one with the sleeve and then one putting it together so that you could just use the sleeve and adapt your own sweater pattern to use this puffy sleeve. I love this style of sweater though with the puffy sleeves. It's like epic. So this is probably my number one favorite sweater of the year the puffy jumper if you're looking for it uh, the next one is one that i actually just finished just before christmas this also is completely hand dyed with plants i've got avocado skins and seeds i've got um oh, what is this one queen anne's lace over here i've got japanese maple here concord grapes aster flowers, black walnut, just a lot of different plants that grow all around as well as avocado seeds because like I'm a millennial we end up having avocados. Sue me. Uh, but it also makes a beautiful pink and I really am I'm really proud of this one. This one is a gigantic sweater. It's like a men's extra large so I can wear it as a sweater dress um, or Alex can wear it as a sweater. So I often wear this with tights and it's very warm and since we're out in the country now and we pay for our heat with like oil heat which is is very expensive it's awesome to be able to have um you know uh, a really cool big thick warm sweater this one's all done in single crochet which i really took a while but it was worth it i really do love this one i'm gonna do a video just a close-up of it where i explain like how many stitches and stuff because I'm really proud of this one uh, but I didn't film it I just made it on the live stream pretty much so this one doesn't have a name it's just Alex's natural dye sweater but I am really proud of this one too okay so the next one is actually this scrap sweater this is all of my scraps from 2018 uh, or I guess half of my scraps all of my acrylic scraps all of my wool scraps is being made into another sweater but it's taking me longer to accumulate wool scraps, so that one's not finished yet. But this is my scrap sweater. I, I think I did do a video on this one, the scrap sweater. So this one is on the channel and I love it. Again, I wear this as a sweater dress. Um, I have an interesting style that is mostly just very comfy things most of the time. Um, I don't really, this is, this is something I wear out in public with just tights because I like it. And honestly, lots of older ladies have complimented me on it. And older men, like grandpa men will come up and say, my wife used to make sweaters like that, or my wife makes sweaters like that. And that's always a good feeling. Having someone appreciate it is awesome. And I know that like, it's obviously handmade because like, <laughs> where are you gonna buy something like this? Um, I don't care, I love it. It's so comfy, it's so soft, and it's also nice because it's like all of those little scraps that are just not long enough to make anything. It's not even half a skein. I just kept it even, so I just did, I made all four pieces of the sweater at the same time. So I would use, like I divided all of my scraps by four and just made it work. So that's why it's all consistent because I, I used all of my scrap yarn and I, like counted to make it even so the sweater is it's got like continuity it's just it's unique but i love it my phone's ringing come here Hoy. all right back to it Ooh. the next one i'm really proud of is this one it is the what is this one called the local buzz sweater i have to remember let me just push everything around here. Um, so this one is a cropped sweater. Oh, now I've got something in my eye. A cropped sweater that I made and I really like it. I mean, it's weird, don't get me wrong. It's got super puffy sleeves, but I really like it. I do wear this one a lot. Uh, I wear it with my, my mom jeans. You know the jeans that are like really up high? Like the ones that hit above my belly button? These lo This looks really good with it because the jeans, it's like, this much above the jeans so there's like very little midsection showing and I mean I wear a tank top underneath because 
I'm not really a tummy shower, but still it looks really good and I wear it with a brooch most of the time. This yarn I also hand dyed. This is avocados and onion skins to make those two colors. Um, and this has been washed like a whole bunch of times and not any fade at all. I didn't dye the gray or the black, but um, the front is black and the back is gray. I called it the local buzz sweater because I feel like it's like a little bumblebee because it's got these puffy little sleeves like little bumblebee wings and then the black top. I really like it a lot. This one I made when we were still in Toronto. So that is, I think, all I brought up to show for the sweaters that I'm making uh, or that I've made this past year. Um, so I'm gonna move on to the next thing. Oh, the next thing I'm proud of. This one's actually a big thank you to you guys because without you, it wouldn't have happened. 25,000 subscribers. We hit 25,000 subscribers on the channel. Thank you so much for subscribing for all of you who have. It blows my mind. 25,000 people. I can't imagine that many people. Like I can't comprehend how many people that is. So thank you so much for subscribing. And I hope that it's worth it for you because I'm going to keep making videos. I'm going to keep doing the stuff that, uh, that hopefully you subscribe for and this year is gonna be even better and that's my goals are gonna come into play there um oh next my next proud moment of this year I hand sewed an entire dress so this was a ugh, this was a big one this was a big project to undertake um, I hand sewed this dress with fabric that I made so I didn't make each patch of fabric, but I took patches from my scrap uh, fabric and I layered them over each other. I used some of that quilting, um, the quilting adhesive spray and I sprayed the patches, no, I sprayed a piece, okay, so first I spread out a piece of this pink fabric. So the wrong side was facing up, the side without the pattern. So you can see there's like pink here. Um, and then I sprayed the wrong side with the adhesive and laid down a bunch of my scrap fabric and that created this sort of patchwork looking fabric that's patchwork on one side and pink on the other. And then I put that through my sewing machine like a thousand times. I made strips uh, one centimeter apart on this huge piece of fabric and I didn't know what to do with it. So I ended up cutting out the shapes for a bodice of a dress and then I decided to hand sew a dress, completely hand sewed together. I mean, decided is like an operative word in a different, it's an opportunistic word because my sewing machines, I sort of took them all apart and couldn't get them put back together. They're currently at a like repair shop. It's not a shop. It's like a older gentleman has them in his garage and he said he's going to put them back together for me. Um, but. I thought I could take apart my own sewing machines and clean them. Uh, don't do that. If you have sewing machines and you're um, in need of having them tuned, just take them to a repair guy. It's gonna be 20 bucks per machine. I thought it was gonna be like $100 because that's how much it used to be at like Sears. Um, but this guy's charging 20 bucks per machine to put all the pieces that I misplaced when I could, I put the thing back together and I had extra pieces. Anyway, he's gonna fix it and then I can sew again. But this happened around that time and I couldn't sew anything because my machines were all kind of busted. So I hand sewed this entire dress. I hand sewed a zipper into this dress. I hand sewed, I felled all the seams down so there are no raw edges on the inside here. It fits my body like a glove because I hand sewed it. I was able to just tailor it as I went. So this is like the most fitted dress that I've ever had and it fits me like it's so beautiful. Like it makes me feel like a million dollars, honestly. And I made the back a V back. This was actually an accident because the zipper I got wasn't long enough. So I had to, like it was a U neck and I had to MacGyver this back. And then for the skirt portion, which I also hand sewed again, and I also felled all the seams. So this bottom portion is, it, there's no raw edge here on either side or on the lace, there's no raw edge. I felled down, it was like a crap ton of work. I filmed the whole thing. The video is on my channel if you wanna check that out. It was so much work and so rewarding. Like honestly, I don't think, I don't think I was bored or angry at this project at any point. Like hand sewing 
for hours and hours and hours. I loved every second of it. So I think I want to do something like that this year, some other big hand sewing project, maybe another dress, honestly, maybe a white dress. Um, so we shall see, but this is something I'm really proud of. I, I worked really hard on it. And the lace is actually, my sister picked it up at a thrift market, not a thrift market, an antique market, some kind of market in Paris. She was in Paris for work and she found this, I think it might have been a tablecloth or a curtain or something, and um, she bought it for me and I turned it into a dress. And then the inner skirt part is an old bed sheet that I bleached because it was kind of a, a tan color and I bleached it and now it's like a very pale gray. So together it turned into this lovely 1950s housewife, politician's wife style dress that I'm very proud of and I love wearing. That's my big hand sewing project of 2019. What else am I proud of? Oh, I'm proud of that I came into my own style this year. I really, I've become very comfortable in my body in a way that I never really was before. And for that reason, I've been able to kind of style myself how I feel confident. And I mean, maybe, maybe it's like, I don't have trendy things because all my stuff is handmade now. So it's most of the time I'm wearing like, if I'm wearing clothes that are purchased, they were purchased many, many years ago, and it's like jeans and a black shirt, and I'm pairing it with something handmade. This was actually sent to me by one of my friends from the live stream. This is one from the Netherlands, and she made it for me. So it's either something I handmade or something that's been handmade for me. And um, for the most part, it's like tights with a big sweater or tights with a black shirt and then a sweater, uh, something like that. But I've been really confident in my handmade style and like my hair I've become confident in. At the beginning of the year I had like a bob, like short bob pink curls and throughout the year it's just been getting shorter and shorter until where we're at now where I've completely shaved down the sides and like I feel totally feminine, I feel totally confident and I feel like really cool in my skin which I mean, don't leave hate comments on this to knock me down a peg. I don't need it. I, I have my insecurities, don't you worry. But I've been feeling really like, this is me. I look pretty much as close to what my inner soul person looks like as I can right now. Um, for example, like if you were in a video game and you were like designing your perfect self, what you would make yourself look like, I'm pretty close to what I would make myself look like now. I'm, Pretty happy with it. I don't think I would change very much. Like maybe I would change the fact that I'm knock kneed because I bruise my inner knees all the time because they just smack up against each other. That's probably it though right now. I'm feeling pretty pretty okay. So coming into my own style and becoming pretty confident in myself has been something I've been proud of this year. Okay another thing that I've this is the last thing on the things I'm proud of this year. Actually, it's the second last. I'm adding another thing. Um, I'm a plant mom now. I don't know if you can see. Uh, it's only showing a portion in the shot right now, but I have over a hundred plants. When we moved out here in July, it's January now, so six months-ish, um, I got, I had two plants or three plants moving into this apartment, moving into this house from our apartment. And now I have over a hundred plants. I have moss terrariums that I gathered from the forest. Like I'm a whimsical woodland fairy, if you didn't already know. Um, that is what I aspire to be, a whimsical woodland fairy. And I've been a whimsical woodland fairy. Look at all these plants that I've managed to keep alive. I think it has to do with the fact that um, I've got a lot of good light in this house. Even right now in the winter, there's still really good afternoon light and um, morning light on the other side of the house, which has been really cool. But I've been really proud of the fact that I've been keeping a lot of tropical plants alive for months and months. Like it's not just like I bought them and they're probably gonna die. Like they're, they're alive. Like I, I'm pretty sure I'm keeping them alive. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the second last thing. The last thing that I'm proud of is my bullet journals. I have been so religiously entering things into these bullet journals. Look how thick this one is. It's got all of my patterns, all of my designs, like the city place pullover, sweaters that I made for Thunder. Look, there's the um, local buzz sweater I designed. 
I have like the designs for everything that I made. And then I also have like my natural dye um, experiments in here. This is, I'm so glad I did this because it's the first year that I've ever been able to really like stick to something. And now I can go back and see all of the dye experiments that I did with little samples of the yarn. And wow, I love it. Like I love looking at it. So it's kind of like a photo album, but it's not a photo, photo album, obviously. But that's the vibe it sort of gives me is like, photo album vibes. Oh, I love it so much. Probably maybe more than I should. Like the golden dog sweater that I made for Thunder. I have this super cute illustration that I made of Thunder. I don't know. I'm really proud of the fact that I could stick to it for a whole year. Like that is bizarre for me. I don't stick to anything for a full year. Like, and I did like drawings for everything and instructions. Like, ugh. Yeah, so feeling pretty cool about that. I'm gonna try and do that again this year. I'm gonna work really hard to um, keep going. I have a new bullet journal for this year uh, for my patterns and I've been putting stuff in it. I've got YouTube videos that I wanna make this year and then all the videos I've done so far. So yeah, I don't know. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm gonna try and find one that's, that's cool that I can show you. Hmm. Wow, I've made quite a few things already. This is the one I'm working on right now. This, oh, this is one I'm pretty excited about. Excited because I'm gonna film it and it's gonna be a tutorial. It's my first ever cardigan. I'm calling it the Fancy Nancy cardigan because I'm using all wool that was sent to me by my friend from the live stream, Nancy. It's gonna be all baggy sleeves because again that's like my thing if you didn't know um baggy sleeves it's probably going to be longer than i actually drew in the book but it's going to be cool so i'll show you uh, what it's looking like right now um, i've got one sleeve done and one front panel and then i'll film the back panel the other front panel and the other sleeve that way um i kind of have an idea of what i'm doing before i start filming but isn't that neat oh i love it and it's all lamb's pride i believe is the wool um, and it's so soft. It's this soft, beautiful wool. And I'm going to probably wear it all spring because it's going to be a cardigan and oh, a cardigan's perfect for everything. So this is something I'm really excited to finish um, this next coming a while soonish. Um, okay, next I want to talk about some things that were hard this year. I'm going to talk about them as I show you some of my incomplete projects that I want to get done this year so that it's kind of like, you know, things I want to work on, things that were hard. Uh, this year, one of the things that was hard was therapy. Who knew? I was very happy to have been going and also it was very hard. Um, explaining to someone your life's trauma, I want to say. I don't have trauma, but you know what I mean. Like your life struggles, explaining it to a stranger is hard and I had to do it two different times because I got a new therapist. And then now I'm doing it a third time because both, can you believe this? Both of my therapists left on maternity leave. The first one, maternity leave. Second one, maternity leave. So now I'm getting a third one. This one won't go on maternity leave because they don't have a uterus. So that will do it. Um, however, um, that was hard. Opening up to two different people and now it's going to be a third person, like talking about stuff that's hard to talk about and like asking for help from a stranger, it's hard. It's hard work. Even though it's like just chatting, it's also like draining. So that's something that was hard this year, accepting that I needed help, getting help and going to therapy. Something that I haven't gotten finished yet this year is the wool scrap sweater. I've got the front panel and the back panel like halfway done. This thing is going to be gigantic. I made it like way bigger than any of the sweaters I've made so far um, because I wanted it to be like basically like a nightgown but a sweater version of a nightgown for me to wear as a sweater dress. Um, and it's all the scraps that I uh, accumulated. It's all Briggs and Little Wool I believe because that's what I was using most of last year. Um, and it's just all the colors that I've been using so I'm I like it a lot. It's cute and the sleeves I've got back over here, um, I made them halfway in purple because I had a big ball of purple and I thought, why not have the sleeves half purple? Because there are no rules in crochet and knits, you can do whatever you want. So I made half of the sleeves purple, the other half will be scrap. 
and then maybe the top half of this sweater will be purple. I haven't decided yet. We'll see. Again, there's no rules. That's something that I haven't gotten finished. Um, something else that I've had a hard time with this year is comments. Reading all of the comments and trying not to internalize them. Like, it doesn't matter if there's a hundred nice comments. I know you've heard this before from literally every YouTuber in the entire world. Um, it doesn't matter if there's a hundred nice comments. If there's four mean ones, it's it's those, those are the ones you remember. If, if 10 people say like, good job, and one person says like, the music you picked was stupid, the next time I'm editing, I am considering like, oh, was the music I used stupid or was that person mean? I don't know. Or if there's like, this, this video is, oh, one of them that people say all the time is, these jeans I modified for Alex. I replaced the crotch on these jeans and I hand sewed a new crotch back in and did embroidery stitches all over it. You can't see it when he's wearing it, but at the same time, he also likes it because he likes the things that I make. And people like hate, hate this um, mod on these jeans. So they say things like, who would ever wear something like this? This is disgusting. Or um, how could your partner ever put these on? And I'm like, like friend, if you don't like it, like click away. Like it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Why do you have to leave a mean comment on it? So that video has actually gotten like that's my most hated video i must say but reading video, reading comments that are unkind not not even the constructive criticism ones those ones are still hard because i do not take criticism well i'm trying i'm learning i'm trying not to react to any of them and i haven't reacted to any of them i don't think i think one i commented back rude because it was like this is disgusting I'm like, okay well thanks um but for the most part I don't reply to them, but it's still hard. It, it's like, you would never really have that happen out in the wild, you know what I mean? Like, if I'm wearing something in a video and somebody says like, that looks terrible on you, it's weird because no one would ever say that to you in public. No stranger would ever come up to you and be like, um, excuse me, hi, you look terrible today. It's just not something that's done. So it's, it's weird because I know I put videos online, but I never really anticipated how it would feel to have strangers leave their thoughts about me and like to make decisions about me based on like a video that I make because yeah I make these videos but that's not like all of me I I am doing YouTube for like maybe 20% of my day and then I'm like a, I'm a whole person outside of this you know I, I have a family and I go hang out with my mom and I have a dog that I play with and like I I do other things but it's kind of like it's kind of like people assume my identity is YouTube and they are more than welcome to comment on like my identity. And it's kind of strange. It's kind of a weird thing. Cause I would never, I, I don't do that. I don't, I don't leave mean comments on people's stuff. Like the only time I've ever left a comment that was like constructively criticism was when someone asked like, have you watched any of my videos and seen any errors I'd like to know? And I commented, your videos are great. However, I noticed that when your music fades, sometimes it's a little bit abrupt, the fade. And they were like, thank you, that's great. I already have started working on that. So it wasn't like an offensive thing, but only when it's been requested have I given feedback to someone. And it was someone that I like, like and someone that I've already interacted with, you know? It's just so weird to me that people like, hate like they hate people like I don't I don't know any of these people I've never met them and like how can they hate me <laughs> so that's been something I've been struggling with like I laugh about it and I can laugh it off and I like I honestly like excuse my language but I like shit talk these comments with my family and friends you know like it's it's like a funny thing that we all talk about kind of like if you go into a store and you yell at the employees all of the employees are making fun of you for the rest of the day and like for the rest of the week you're the joke at that store um but you think you're all entitled like you know the, the karens the um i want to speak to the manager like when you work at a store you make fun of that person and like we do that at my friends and family outside of youtube but like it's still kind of weird that i i have to figure out how to not feel it i guess or how to maneuver around how much i'm feeling it but that's something I'm still working on. Okay, and after all of that, um, something else I want to finish this year, geez Louise, this vest. I've had it 
almost all year. I, I made the front panel, I loved the front panel, and then I never finished it. So I have to make the back piece and sew this thing together. Alex wants a sweater vest and I it's taken me like almost all of 2019. I think I made this last winter. So it's a cute vest. I did this with like color work. So it's got like a checked looking pattern and I, I love it. But um, I just have to make the other side. Uh, and I'm avoiding it because it was a lot of work to make that front side. And I did it like for fun. So I didn't count my stitches. I just sort of did it as I went and don't do that. If you're designing a pattern, just write down what you're doing for your future self. Should've done that, didn't, it's fine. Okay, <laughs> something else. Um, oh, this is what I, moving forward. Oh, actually I wanna show you one other thing. Um, I'm so all over the place. This is the type of person I am. Um, okay, so this year at Christmas, one of my subscribers and friends from the Netherlands, the same one that sent me this, sent me a drop spindle and I have been very much enjoying playing with it and I'm learning to spin yarn. Uh, it's hard and rewarding and fun and I've got some tips and tricks from um, another friend, one of them from England. She's been giving me some really good advice on how to spin, but I want to show you what I've made. So this is my drop spindle. This is my current work in progress, which I'm very proud of. It's so consistent. It's all the same thickness, which is like goals when you're spinning yarn, if you're not a yarn spinner. If you are, then just don't, don't look right now because it's not, I'm not doing a good job like for someone who already does it. But if you don't do it, I'm like an expert, you know? Um, so this is something that I've been working on. I know this is an oven thing, but it can go into the bathtub with hot water. And that's what I have to do with this next is soak it in hot water to set the twist, question mark, and then I have to let it dry. But this is the skein of yarn that I've made with the wool that she sent me. And it's, it's pretty, like it's not totally consistent. There are thick and thin parts, but like overall, I think I can actually make something with this yarn. So I'm really proud of this and I'm very excited to keep learning how to spin. I wanna get better and better at it because it's a fun pastime and like, it's a nice quiet activity that like I can do. I mean like I crochet so that's a quiet activity too but this is cool and I love the idea of being like I had a pile of wool and now I have a sweater you know like making it from the beginning. The next step is to like get a sheep but whoa Nelly we need a little bit more time uh, to learn how to adult a little bit better before um, before we start doing that. So that's something that I'm learning and very happy about. Um, something that I want to get finished uh, this, this year, hopefully, is this pinafore apron. I started it last year. It's all hand sewn. I'm making it out of muslin cotton. So it's like unbleached. I guess this is probably bleached. It's like a tan color though. Anyway, it's going to be a pinafore apron that I'm going to use when I'm natural dyeing so that it gets stained up with all of my natural dyes. Um, I've done all of the edges. I've felled down the seam, the hems. And I've also uh, done some embroidery and I've created a pocket on it. But this year, probably in the next month or so, I'm going to just get it finished because it's only it only needs like probably like six, six hours of work, um, which sounds insane. But for some reason, that seems worth it when you start hand sewing. So probably six hours of embroidery left to do on it and then it'll be done. So I think I'm going to do that in February, probably. But this is something that I'm really happy about. I love this apron. I love aprons. I don't know if you knew this is an apron, but oh, it's not there anymore. I'm sitting on it. That someone sent me as well. I think it was Donna who sent me this one. Um, and it's all vintage 1950s, 1950s through 1960s, uh, vintage um, simplicity sewing patterns. I put it ugh, on here because I don't have a reason to wear an apron at the moment because I'm not doing any apron crafts yet. But this is something I've got to finish and I'm going to. Another thing I'm working on, I want to show you a couple of the projects I'm working on right now, is this. This is going to be a little 1920s style like ladies hat. I don't know if it looks 1920s. Honestly, I keep thinking it looks like a fishing hat, but I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to figure out the pattern for this and it's going to be like one of those 1920s because it's the 20s now. So I want to do a few patterns that are like 1920s ish. So this is going to be a hat that's probably going to come out in February as well. Um, cause I have to write out the pattern 
Um, this is also the first time that I've managed to use stitch markers. I received a whole bunch from a bunch of different subscribers uh, as Christmas gifts. Okay, also, let me just um, self-promo here. I have a P.O. box, so if you like to send people happy mail, I will link it in the description down below. Uh, not link it, I'll post the address so you can, if you want to send happy mail, you can send me a card, you can send me a letter, uh, <laughs> you can send me stitch markers, I do love those, and I received a whole bunch for Christmas and I've been using them, so that's been really fun. I'm, I'm happy about that because I've never had them before. I've always just tied another piece of yarn to mark where my stitches are, but now I've got little stitch markers. They're so much cuter than yarn and so much easier to reuse because they've got the lobster clasps. Mm, so cute. So I'm gonna finish that hat and then that will come out as well. Um, something else I wanna do this uh, year in the winter probably because I want these jeans to be done uh, for summer is I want to get these jeans done. I've been working on these embroidered and mm, modified jeans. So these are like my favorite pair of jeans and I, um, I've i lost some weight since I purchased these. These are like 10 year old jeans and also they're like not made of denim so they stretched all the way out. So what I did last year was I, I made them smaller. I, I, I hand sewed in so that they actually fit me again and they're like high-waisted they're so they're amazing I love these jeans and if you've watched any of my embroidery videos I did this like um, embroidery patches on the knees and I filmed videos for those so this one is like an earth patch and then this one's like a moon patch so then the knees are like outer space knees and then I added some little fabric patches over the seams just to reinforce them because like my thighs don't quit, they just want to pull the fabric apart. So I've been adding little patches so that even if the seam pulls, there's like fabric to reinforce it. Um, and I replaced the pocket on one side with some beautiful sunflower fabric that I had. I just really liked it and I wanted to use it somewhere. And then I'm doing embroidery on the back side, and that's just, it's just been fun. Oh, and I replaced one of the pockets with one of Alex's pockets from his jeans because why are girls' jeans pockets not big enough for your cell phone? So I just replaced it with one that is big enough. And I'm pretty much just going to continue embroidering these until they're like just wild. I mean, they're already a little wild, but until they're wild jeans. The only thing I need to work on um, is adding stretch back in because I did not consider that when I was embroidering. And I put them on and they like... They just fit me now. So I think I'm going to add a little bit of a, an elastic portion somewhere just so that I can breathe a little bit easier. They look really good, but it's kind of like sandy at the end of Greece, you know, like th those leather pants, except they're made of denim. Like I have to lie down to do up the zipper, which is, it's fine, I'll do it because I love these jeans, but that was not my original intention. They were just supposed to fit me, but now because the cotton embroidery thread doesn't have the stretch that the denim did, I didn't account for that, so. Either I have to somehow manage to shave off like side hip weight, which is never gonna happen. I'm violently pear-shaped and that's the way it's gonna stay. Um, or I have to figure out some modification in order to make these fit me again. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Maybe I'll just like cut out a square and just add in like a stretchy patch. Cause like there are no rules when you're doing hand embroidery. So, I want to get that finished this year. That's something I want to do. I want to do more hand embroidery overall. Like I really enjoy hand sewing and hand embroidery. It's like one of my really favorite things. And my fingers have no wounds on them right now. There's no evidence that I've ever done hand embroidery or hand stitching. So I feel like I need to make something and toughen up these calluses in time for summer. Um, but that's stuff that I want to work on in 2020. So I have a list as well. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry if this is something that grosses you out. It's something that I do. So just hold on a second, mute yourself while I get through my knuckles. Okay. So things I want to make this year, money. I want to make money. This year, I'm going to be doing a bunch of business building for last minute, Laura. Uh, some of the things that I've listed that I want to start working on. I want to do, I want to advertise super chats in my live streams better. I, I don't do that right now. Um, and I've watched a few streams from other streamers and it seems like everybody else like mentions it in the stream. So I'm going to start doing that. Um, I'm going to promote my Amazon wishlist. I'll link it down below if you like to support creators through Amazon wishlists. 
I will link that. No pressure. Um, I'm gonna do bonus streams for people who purchase my memberships. So it's not a membership, it's like a donation, but I don't know how to call it not a donation because it's not like a charity, it's like a business. It's weird, whatever. On my website, you can um, support me by paying $2, $5, or $10, and it's gonna be like called a membership so that I can give you something for doing that. Maybe it'll be free patterns, maybe it'll be uh, bonus live streams like where you can just get the link so only you can see it and the people who support. I don't know yet, I'm still figuring it out. I also want to get better at cross promotion, posting on Instagram and Facebook because like I'm not great at it. I also want to get better at my consistency, my thumbnails, my video tags, and my descriptions. I don't know anything about like SEO and like that stuff and I want to do that this year. That's something I want to do. Uh, I also want to do merch. That's something I'm really like excited and anticipating this year. Um, I want to do tote bags, hats, and t-shirts. I don't know, I think I might make the tote bags and the hats and then outsource the t-shirts. Uh, Alex really wants to like make the t-shirts though, so maybe Alex will be making the t-shirts, my partner. Um, something else, one of my goals for this year, I want to stay on track with yoga. I'm not a yogi by any means, like I can touch my toes, but like I can't do any crazy poses or hold anything for very long, like I have no muscles. But um, this year I want to keep up with my yoga. I do yoga with Adrian, if uh, any of you do yoga as well. Um, they're just easy and they accommodate everybody. So um, I do like 20 minutes a day and it's like before bed, it's like my before bed thing. And I want to keep up with it this year. It's been really good for me. I've kind of taken about a month off right now and I can feel the stiffness, like in the morning I'm stiff and I wasn't. So I want to get back on track with that and um, and keep doing it because it's, it's awesome and it's good for me. Um, I want to foster another dog. That's one of my goals for this year. We used to foster dogs all the time when we lived in Ottawa, Alex and I. Um, Thunder was actually our second foster. <laughs> he was a foster fail. We ended up keeping him. Um, but we fostered puppies, senior dogs, uh, like tons of, we, like, six or seven dogs I think at this point and we haven't fostered anything anybody in like four years three three years how long have we been out of Ottawa I don't know like three years probably and I want to foster a dog again like I, I have a huge house now it's not huge but it's huge to me there's tons of room to keep a dog like another dog so I want to foster another dog um I would foster cats but my cat hates cats so I'm not going to do that but dogs I can do. So I want to do that this year at some point. Um, another goal I have is to get lighting and audio equipment because currently it's just the Rode mic that's on top of the camera and currently this is my only camera lens. Like the camera right now is like more than 10 feet away from me and you can see how close the like screen is, like how close it looks like I am to you. Um, but the camera is actually like 10 feet away from me. Uh, because I broke my regular lens, so this is like an up-close lens, like a macro lens, um, which is not what you're supposed to film this type of video on. So I want to get better audio equipment, better lighting, and um, probably a, a new lens at some point this year. Audio equipment because I want to have good quality videos, lighting because as you can see the sun is going down now and the light, the like the appearance of this video is probably different than when we started. I've been going like an hour now, I think. So yeah, I want to have lighting so that my videos can be consistent and so I can film whenever I want to film. I want to be able to film in the evening if I'm motivated or in the morning if I'm motivated or when it's rainy if I'm motivated. Whenever I'm motivated, I want to be able to film. And right now it's like, I have to try and like tie my motivation to the weather, which works because like I have like seasonal affective disorder basically uh when it's cold dark and rainy I'm unhappy and when it's sunny and warm I am happy which makes me motivated but I want to be able to make more videos better this year um which is part of the next thing I want to improve my film setup I want to have my dedicated film room that's always set up that isn't for anything else except also it's for plants because it's got a tile floor and a door to the outside. So maybe it'll have some other things, but mostly I want it to be like a film room so that I can stay consistent and have all my videos sort of mesh together. Um, 
I want to go on a road trip this year. I don't know if I want to go out east or out west. Alex and I have this like dream to drive all the way to BC um, from Ontario, which is a bit of a drive. Like it's it's like days of driving, days and days. Um, but I thought it would be like a beautiful way to see all of Canada. Like how else am I going to see this country? Like driving is a beautiful way to see a country so i want to do a road trip i've already gone out east with alex we've done nova scotia before i would do it again if that's the road trip we can do we could do new york again maybe um but nova scotia is a beautiful drive i love driving through new brunswick so that would be cool plus then i would add a stop in to visit the briggs and little factory or not factory briggs and little mill um which is, like I said, the yarn that I've been mostly using, I want to visit their mill. So if we were to go out east, I would be able to make a stop there. If we go out west, it'll just be beautiful and we'll have a great time. So I want to go on a road trip. I also want to have a dye garden this year. So I have all this space, like I have a huge, huge front yard that, like, my dog is basically not a dog, like, he's basically a cat. Yes, we go on walks, yes, we go on hikes, he can go hiking for like two hours and he's totally down for it. But he doesn't like explore he stays really close to me so if i go on walks great but like he doesn't use our lawn like a dog does he doesn't run around on the lawn he like walks where i'm walking so um i want to use the lawn in a different way i want to put some gardens in on both sides i want to put in a vegetable garden i want to put in a natural dye garden and i want to put in a flax seed garden because i want to make linen i know that's like it's like weird, I guess. It's not weird, I think it's cool. I wanna make linen, but to make linen, you need to have flax, you need to grow flax. And then it takes like a year to process the flax because you have to leave it out in the wet and then it has to dry and then it has to rot and then you get fiber and then you spin it and then you have uh, linen. So I wanna make linen. That's my uh, one of my goals for this year, um, which is, maybe a little lofty but i'm still hopeful that i'll be able to do it so i want to have a flax garden a vegetable garden and a natural dye garden where i'll plant like sunflowers and black-eyed susans and marigolds and lots of stuff like that that's something i'm i'm pumped about this year uh i also want to get to 50,000 subscribers i think we can do it honestly we've gotten to 25,000. we're almost i think we're at 26 and change now um so I think we can get to 20 to 50,000 if I don't fall off the face of the earth, you know? So that's something I want to do this year, hopefully. One of my goals. Um, another one of my goals is to write out and sell or give away my patterns. I, I don't know if I want to sell them or if I want to put them on like a blog that has ads or something. Um, haven't figured out exactly what I want to do, but I know I want to write out my patterns in a way that I can like disseminate them to other people. Cause right now it's like my bullet journal. I want to like transport that into like a PDF or something. Writing out my patterns for sure. Another goal that I have that I'm anxious about, cause it seems stressful, is I want to look out for sponsorships and partnerships. I don't exactly know how to go about it just yet. I haven't ever done it before. I've reached out to some of the companies that I already use their stuff like Briggs and Little and like Red Heart and Premier. Who else did I email? I emailed Skillshare. I emailed like people who do sponsorships as well, like Skillshare and um, the Food Box one. Those types of things. I want to get a sponsorship. I I know that like I don't feel like it's selling out. That's not like how I vibe with it. I think of it as like that's how you make money. Like I want to keep making videos. And if I already use the wool, if they pay me to use the wool, it's not really changing anything. So, um, yeah, I want to get a sponsorship this year. That is my goal. Hey, if you are a company and somehow you're watching this, sponsor me. I'm like, I'm not family friendly. I'm mostly family friendly with like the occasional swear word, but I mean like, I'm pretty cool. I think sponsor me or become a partner with me somehow. I don't know how any of that works yet. So haven't figured that out yet, but that's something I wanna do. I also wanna try meditation. That is something that's a big goal for me this year, meditation. That, 
I want to get into it. I have racing thoughts most of the time. The ADHD brain in me just can't handle not thinking. Um, but I'm going to try this year. I'm going to, with my yoga, I'm going to try and do like breathing techniques and like meditation. We'll see how it goes. I'll let you know. I want to keep waking up at 5 a.m. That's something that I've been doing for like a while and I like it. It makes me feel good to wake up early. I've, again, fallen off of it. I've been waking up around six. Um, I want to get back to waking up at five. It feels good to be awake before the world is. Plus, I'll have better opportunities to see the deer. The deer are always gone by the time I wake up. I see their tracks. I see their poop. I never see them. So I think if I wake up a little earlier, I'll be able to see them. Maybe the coyotes, too. I already see the turkeys, but I don't get to see the coyotes and the deer. So that's another goal. I want to see the coyotes and the deer walking around because they do all the time because there's new prints all the time. Anyway, keep streaming. That's one of my big goals. I want to keep streaming because it's fun. I like doing it and it makes me feel good and it's part of my income and it's like a really cool community. So that's something that I want to keep doing this year for sure. And the last one, the big one, I want to give to a charity this year. I don't know how I'm going to go about doing it. I don't know if it's going to be through like, like, getting you guys involved with YouTube and all that, or if I just want to do it on my own, but I want to help something somehow, some way. I want to give to a charity, probably an animal charity because like people, meh, no, I'm just joking. Obviously like people are great. Most people are good, whatever. Animals are kind of where my heart is. So I want to do an animal charity. Um, but yeah, that's one of my big goals for this year is to actually be able to give like a good, donation to a charity that I value. Okay, so I think that's, I think I covered pretty much everything I wanted to talk about in this video. Um, I, I wanna do another video on the projects of, that I'm working on and projects for 2020 um, because I have a lot of crochet project ideas. Like I would read out the list, but I think there's like 57 items on the list right now. Let me check, I have a big long list of crochet things. Oh, 55 items on the video ideas for this year. So I want to do a video on that um, on its own where I can say like, do you like these ideas? What videos do you want to see soon? What videos do you not want to see? Um, so that I can kind of prioritize those. That would be really helpful if you guys could uh, interact with that video when that comes out. That'll be soon um, within a couple of weeks. And um, what else have I got to say? I've always got something to say, but I think this is it for this video. Uh, my tea is now cold. I'll still drink it. Um, yeah, I think I've got, that's all I got right now. Um, I want to make this year awesome. Thank you so much for being a part of last year. If you've been here, if you've seen the progression of this channel, thank you for watching me grow or helping me grow if you've been interacting and join in definitely interact it's it's cool to talk to you so if you're watching from the back and just sort of quietly watching like that's okay but it'd be awesome if you introduce yourself because i see the views and i'd love to I'd love to chat with all of you so leave a comment down below uh introduce yourself and join the live stream if you want to chat with me one-on-one -on -one. not one-on-one -on -one, one on many but it's like live so we can chat and um yeah, this year is going to be good. 2020, the year of clarity. It's going to be a good year. I think a lot's going to happen this year. I think it's going to be uh, one of those transformative years. Can you hear my cat snoring? He's sleeping on the couch and he's snoring. So that's it. I hope you got some work done on your project while you were hanging out with me. I hope that your tea got to be finished before it was cold. And I hope that maybe something in this video inspired you to try something or, or work on something or be okay with the fact that things were hard on something. I don't know. I hope it was good for you in some way or at least entertaining. Um, I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for coming. Bye.